Hello, so my name is Moth. my pronouns are they, them, and today I'm going to be talking about peer-to-peer -peer URLs and how we use them in the Agrigore browser. So um, yeah, you can find me online at Ranger Mov. Um, I work for more Mov Software Inc., but that's just me, and I guess I also work for Protocol Labs indirectly. <laughs> but I'm like really obsessed with peer-to-peer -peer protocols just from like my career as a developer, kind of learned that there's a lot of pain points that peer-to-peer -peer protocols kind of just sidestep entirely. Like, I really don't like having to hoard user data. It just leads to all of these um, just weird dynamics where everything's centralized in one place, it's easier to abuse, and it takes a lot more time to scale. I like things that are a little bit more person to person, where I'm sharing data with people that I actually want to be sharing it with directly. Or I don't have to worry about AWS going down and then suddenly like nothing working at all. And I want my applications to work on any network. Because, you know, like say we're here at the hotel Wi Fi and maybe some websites don't load, or say we have a spotty internet connection and suddenly our chat apps don't work and we can't communicate. So the default cloud environment makes it really hard to avoid these problems. It's possible, but with peer-to-peer -peer protocols, it's the default. So obviously IPFS, I really love it because the content addressability really takes uh, advantage of this. So rather than having, um, data always pulled from the cloud, we can pull it from local caches if necessary, local peers and all of that. Um, and it's useful in that it can kind of detect data across different um, peers, even if they don't have the entire data set, which is different from things like BitTorrent. However, it also means that um, it can be a little heavy. However, um, combined with some other protocols on the web, we can kind of take trade-offs and um, kind of use the best tool for the job, which I think eventually might just be IPFS. Um, however, outside of just raw peer-to-peer -peer protocols, I'm really interested in the idea of how we can have deep integrations with the web. So as Dietrich and Lytle hinted earlier, um, URLs are kind of like the bread and butter of the web right now, where you have some sort of scheme, usually HTTP or HTTPS, some sort of origin you're loading stuff from, the path to the whatever specific file you want to load, and some extra search parameters for stuff. What's cool is that we can apply that similar concept to a whole bunch of different protocols. So obviously, we've seen some IPFS URLs where we have the content ID in the origin section, but uh, what if we could do the same thing with BitTorrent, where we have an info hash or a hypercore protocol or IPNS or literally whatever else? What's cool th is that URLs give us this like base building block that a lot of people already understand and that we can map to a lot of data very easily. So the sort of stuff that we can load from these URLs is stuff like web pages for just like the raw HTML for a page or having iframes that embed subcontent. You know, we have media like images, audio, video, all this stuff, our styles. And this could be loading, uh, loading scripts directly from your local network. And what's more is this isn't just like raw URLs. We can start taking advantage of this with JavaScript APIs for more dynamic uses. Like say we want to load from larger data set, we can use the browser's built-in fetch API which typically requires a server, um, but we can ditch the server and just focus on the content. Similarly, there's APIs like event source that come just packaged in with JavaScript that lets us subscribe on changes over time. For instance, for libp2p pub sub. Um, and so outside of just URLs for loading stuff, there's a little bit more functionality under the hood with the way HTTP works works. So as a lot of folks know, um, it's based on a request response cycle where a client will send a request, and then a server will get back a re response. And the request usually contains some sort of method for what you want to do. 
uh, a URL for what you want to do it to, some headers for uh, extra little configurations that aren't in the URL. And sometimes you might be sending a request body to the server being like, hey, I want to do this thing, and here's what you can do it with. Similarly, the server will then give you a status code, be like, yeah, that worked, or no, that didn't work, or how about you go look over there instead? As well, so headers for, because I don't know, you need extra data everywhere. And usually just the content of the thing you loaded. So we see this a lot with doing a get request to a website and getting back 200 response saying okay with the content we want. But we can also see that happening for, say, an IPNS URL, where we're asking IPNS to give us back some data. The cool thing I want to talk about today is how we can take that a step further, where rather than browsers strictly loading content, we can think about what it would mean to post to a peer-to-peer -peer URL and tell a peer-to-peer -peer protocol to upload some data. So this is also very similar to um, what gateways do and the stuff that Lytle talked about, where gateways, um, rather than a URL, they have a subpath or a subdomain, which takes that IPNS CID and with ingestible data gateways, as Lionel said, um, we could also start thinking about how we can post or put some data over top of an existing data set or something fresh and get back a new CID. So this is the sort of stuff that I've been experimenting in the Agrigor browser. So Agrigor is a minimalist web browser that I created to explore what it'd be like to mix these protocols together under this HTTP-like interface. So it aims to have as few assumptions as possible, as few like fancy features as possible, and focus more on centering the protocols and using web extensions to add extra functionality that I didn't think of doing initially. Um, so right now, we actually have support for a whole bunch of protocols and are actively working on supporting more. So obviously we have IPFS, but we also have support for IPNS stuff in ways that you might not even think are there yet, which I might go into later. Um, we also support libp2p pubsub secretly, which um, I don't think there's any spec for it out there or documentation, but lets us kind of do the ephemeral peer-to-peer -peer stuff through a protocol handler. Um, lastly, also, we have IPLD. But then outside of the IPFS ecosystem, we're looking at other peer-to-peer -peer protocols that have their own trade-offs, like the HyperCore protocol ecosystem, BitTorrent, where we have kind of like a new uh, URL scheme which doesn't really exist but almost existed like 20 years ago, um, and also regular magnet, magnet links. Then we also support uh, the gun DB, peer-to-peer <laughs> -peer API and uh, secure scuttlebutt for loading social data. Also, we support Gemini, which is kind of like Gopher, but with Markdown and more simple. <laughs> so like just weird, obscure things. And obviously, like anyone seeing this remotely, like uh, if you want your protocol in there, just like open an issue or DM me. Um, yeah, but like... I'm just gonna jump right into it and show you what this looks like in practice. How do I actually use these protocol handlers? So I am going to tempt fate and do a live demo. Um, so as I mentioned before, we can put some data over an existing IPFS uh, directory tree or data set. And there is this really cool standard for CIDs called, I think it was like inline or raw CIDs or something, but Basically, uh, what it lets you do is skip the network, sit, skip actually having a block, and just have data inline in the CID. And I use that to have a site CID representing no data, just an empty directory. So this is what it looks like. Baffy Abaka Eak, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm sure Adeem could probably decipher that as well. Um, but how do we actually add data to this empty data set? So if we look in here, I'm going to say I want to create a new index.md page. And I'm going to have a fetch request, which will pass in that URL. 
and it'll pass in a method saying that I want to put some data in there. And then for the body, I'm going to have just some inline markdown. Load IPS thing. Wow. Does this really work? Um, and a cool emoji for the style. So I'm going to send that off. It's going to take a few seconds, and bam, it sent the uh, the request to the built-in protocol handler in Agrigor, and it gave me back a response. Now, to get the new URL, I'm going to look in the response headers, and I'm going to get the location header, which tells me the location of the URL that just got created. So here we have an actual CID, which is a lot less legible and harder to pronounce. But this will actually load it, load it from um, the network. So if someone manages to copy that manually, hopefully they'll actually load it. Um, but I instantly regret saying that. <laughs> So what I can do is I can tell the page to navigate to it, and bam. Um, <laughs> there you go. So that's how I can create a website um, pretty much in like one or two requests. And what's cool is that if I want to update a website with new content, all I got to do is just put another file or update an existing piece of data, and I can just get back these URLs. So this means that for developers trying to make local-first apps, removes a huge amount of dependencies and tooling and all of that that might take a lot more time to learn. Whereas here, they can take pretty much just the, the lowest level, like simplest JavaScript that they can like copy paste from Stack Overflow and just change the fetch to instead use IPFS. So um, yeah, so the goal here is really to simplify it while still giving us most of the power of the IPFS stack. So yeah, that was that. Um, so it's great. It works. It's so easy. It's amazing. But it's not perfect. And so as part of developing um, some actual web apps using these protocol handlers that work on um, mobile and on desktop, we actually came across some pain points that I think are kind of making it more difficult and uh, are areas where we can like gain a lot of improvements, like namely, IPNS is the only way to really have mutable data in IPFS that is like standardish and doesn't require extra servers or extra like complex ad hoc things. Like you could do IPFS or uh, libp2p stuff uh, yourself or have a blockchain or whatever else. But like a lot of these methods aren't really local first. They don't work um, on your local network and spread out. And you know like IPNS is right there. Like it's built in. It should be faster and easier to use. And I think we're slowly making progress there. As well with mutability, um, there's currently no obvious way to pin mutable data, where we have this awesome pinning API where we can tell a service to um, pin some data and keep it online for us for when we're offline. But we can't tell it to keep uh, data that updates over time online for us. So that's like another thing that's being actively worked on. And um, another thing that we found a lot is that actually sending data over the peer-to-peer -peer network between, say, two home networks is still a little bit iffy, because even though we have this cool new uh, hole-punching feature that is out in the latest Kubo, um, it's not everywhere. And it doesn't work for everything yet. And it's still kind of new. So um, one of the useful things from trying to mix these protocols on the web and kind of simplifying it down is that uh, we can find all of these new areas to improve the protocol and make it better and faster and easier to use. Um, so like, why do I bother with all of this stuff? Like, Why does Aggregor even exist? And I think a really important thing for me is to make local first software possible. And that's software which contains user-owned data, where rather than a third party having you know, final say on what my data is. It's me. It's about software that can work offline by default. 
and doesn't rely on you connecting to a third party service in order to do anything. It's stuff that can work on your local area network if you have like an ad hoc uh, Wi-Fi thing set up or like a router attached to a battery in the woods. But it can also scale over the internet and do all of those fancy things that we're used to things doing, like sending an email. Um, and um, I think another place where this local first software and peer-to-peer -peer protocol stuff really mixes in well is in community mesh networks, where now we can think not only about decentralizing our data, but also decentralizing our uh, infrastructure. And this is also very important for cases where uh, communities are just not served by the current cloud infrastructure, where they might have a lot of outages, which this peer-to-peer -peer stuff is resilient to, or they might have, um, you know, limitations on how much data they can exchange or how expensive it is, which we can just totally sidestep by not needing to touch the internet. And as well, um, a really important thing is how to actually distribute applications on these networks where, you know, I'm sure a lot of the folks in this room are really used to like having our fancy Linux and Mac machines with like super beefy CPUs and like know all of the fancy tooling and know how to download it and use it and all of that. But like building apps that you can distribute across platforms that are local first is really hard and takes a lot of really like specialized engineering knowledge. And I believe that with peer-to-peer -peer and web technology together, we can sidestep a lot of that and package resilient apps and distribute them the same way we would any other information. Um, yeah, so that's kind of Aggregor and peer-to-peer -peer URLs and the stuff that I'm focused on and why. Um, hopefully this will be interesting to folks and yeah, I'm around for questions if there are any. You mentioned um, pinning mutable content. Uh, is that something that you, like, I'd love to hear more how you envision that happening and if that's essentially something like uh, a service or, or a way to reprovide IPNS records or is it independent of that? Yeah, so, I mean, I think there's different levels. Uh, the highest level for someone actually using the system is what if I can send an IPNS URL rather than an IPFS CID through the pinning service spec? And so right now there's a dev grant uh, that I think just got approved like a few weeks ago for the person working on the Fiero pinning service where um, they're actually gonna standardize how to do mutability over time. But like the other details of like, um, is this pinning service gonna be able to republish my IPNS uh, record indefinitely? That's like a really big question because IPNS as it is now just isn't really geared towards the originator of the record uh, going offline for more than like, you know, I, I think a day. And so this means that even if we republish those records on the pinning service, it wouldn't work. So there's actually a lot of area for research on increasing that timeout or figuring out how we can delegate permission to the pinning service to generate fresh records on our behalf, which we can revoke with something like UCANs. Or I mean, in the short term, we might just be sending our private keys to a service we trust, if we trust them, which is awful for security, but it'll get the job done while we figure out the fanciest, fancier stuff. So um, yeah, so to answer your question, it, it's still very fresh. We don't know everything. This is an area of active research. Uh, I love your focus on local first software. It's <laughs> super fantastic, thank you. I think these sorts of like, yeah, but what if we could actually do it like this is really, really important. Um, it reminds me, we started basically saying, what if no servers ever? Mm -hmm. um, and that guided a lot of our design. People are adding servers into the stuff that we're doing, but that is in fact a lot easier than putting that, which I love. Um, I've generally made the decision to um, include DNS, and shoving things into DNS text records yeah. as something that is uh, decentralized enough. Can you perhaps comment on your feelings towards DNS? Yeah, it's really complicated because like 
I think right now DNS and DS Nestlink is just the most reliable form of mutability for IPFS data if you're connected to the internet, can afford a registrar, uh, trust your registrar with your um, link, and also like have APIs to make updating that DNS record very easy. And these are like very big ifs that kind of limit who can reliably do it. Um, I guess the next level from that is all of the blockchain-based DNS things, which are kind of getting popular now, where it kind of like makes the APIs a bit more open, or in some cases, it might be like more trustless and decentralized, or like, you know, maybe some of them will like cache more of your records locally or pre-download them. But at the end of the day, it all depends on the internet, um, which doesn't really fit with the local first context. So I don't think there's anything out there right now that does something like DNS that works for the like, very extremist local first views that I have. But there's also active conversation about like, can we have something like DNS that's based on our social graph? Where it's like, I say, this is like move.com and you say like, yeah, it's move.com because you say it is. So like lots of challenges there, obviously not perfect, but um, yeah, TLDR, DNS kind of works if you're technical, not really local first at all. Local first stuff might exist if we're lucky, um, like probably not anytime soon. Um, yeah, j just like with Zuko's triangle, the whole like uh, global uniqueness, human readable and trustlessness thing, I just kind of go with global uniqueness and trustlessness and then say, just share QR codes or links directly between people you trust, um, yeah. I think there's a question back there as well for after. <laughs> Michael's first. <laughs> okay, I'll ask my name to be quick. Uh, so in your fetch demo and like, here you had like get HTTP URL, post HTTP URL, but mm -hmm. at least in my mental model usually, like the get and post are defined by HTTP. So when you're like get or post or put like IPFS colon, you know, scheme URL, mm -hmm. or in my head, you know, you, I'm thinking of like a did scheme URI. Like, what is the protocol by, that has methods, like HTTP style methods, non HTTP URI schemes, but isn't HTTP? It's like, I feel like we need a name for that. You know what I mean? And, may, and then I thought of you can invocations as sort of being like that, where we have capability oh. method names sort of over like rel, almost arbitrary URIs, or at least did URIs. And anyway, that's like potentially one answer, but I'm more I'm more just curious if you thought about okay, well, the one, protocol of that or something. Methods plus arbitrary URIs, not just HTTP. Well, I mean, I like I just say HTTP like things, or I I say more like I'm taking these protocols and applying the HTTP like metaphor onto them. Um, one like really tricky thing there is the method name actually matters a lot in terms of which clients support which methods, which like technically with the spec, you, you can use like whatever the name you want. Like I can make the method like uh, name publish and the spec will support it, but like most clients will not like Node.js won't, Doe Engine, like a bunch of other things because for optimization's sake and maybe security, they just like don't acknowledge things existing. So pretty much like if we wanna use this HTTP-like interface, which I think is valuable, we're kind of stuck with like limiting ourselves to HTTP-like concepts. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, HTTP-like. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Move. I really appreciate the demo. Um, I think the work is really important. Um, given that this is a proof of concept, what do you think is the most constructive way of taking your proof of concept to something that becomes more ubiquitous? And I would be looking for something more like very specifics, or like very specific implementations that you think are reasonable to approach. like. I would see ultimately to have, I think you called it aggregor, to be something baked into the operating system of your local device, for example, or maybe part of its networking stack. Um, and if that were the vision, I'm not saying that it is, how would you get from here to there? Yeah, well, okay, like 
three things just in terms of stuff that would be useful to do to progress this is one is if we can standardize some of this uh, ingestible gateway <laughs> concepts <laughs> or writable gateways and if we could get them in something like Brave because once we can get the ability to post data to any other like you know real web browser with actual users rather than like you know, the dozen or so people that actively use this thing, um, then we can start like building applications that are like going to work for the general populace more. Um, the other thing, speaking of applications, you know, we have these cool protocols. We have the IPFS stuff working on mobile Android pretty well. Um, now's the time to start making little demos and little apps to kind of teach people how to use these concepts by um, looking at existing things and to actually just show that it, it works and is useful. Uh, in terms of operating systems, I have a, an evil scheme that's like very low key where thinking maybe I can just fork Chrome OS and then just slap the IPFS stuff that we already did in there. And suddenly we have a peer-to-peer -peer operating system that's kind of like a Cappy Loom, but um, more Googled. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, like I think outside of that for operating system integration, daemons just are kind of the easiest way to integrate where um, I've integrated some of these protocol handlers as HTTP daemons in other programming languages in other applications that are outside of Agrigore. And since we still have pretty much the same metaphor between protocol handlers and HTTP requests, it's really easy to make reusable code and modules between those different environments. So that's kind of like the main places where I think we should be going if we want to be working on stuff. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.